Outdoor Junkies is presented by Lightfield Ammunition, manufacturers of premium ammunition, and Whitetails Unlimited, working for an American tradition. So today on Outdoor Junkies, we're going to be mounting Aaron Sommerfeld's spring bear that he shot last year. I can't wait to reel the first one in. Everybody looks at us like we're nuts. Uh, caught him, caught him, caught him. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, John Hi, I'm Don Rich, Nature's Touch Taxidermy. This is my daughter, Katie. Hi. This is my personal collection, everything I've shot over the years. It's 30 to 40 years of hunting and fishing through here. Uh, this, this deer right here is actually the one my daughter and I shot together just recently. And uh, her and I worked on it together with a little Indian background. Been doing, I've been doing taxidermy since I was a little kid. I'm a second generation taxidermist, uh, and I'll train the third generation. Uh, she's been great help in the shop. Uh, you'll be seeing her sewing skills today. Here we've got Aaron's bear back from the tannery right here. You can see it's a spring bear. Very thick, very thick fur. Probably two, three inches longer than a, a fall bear would be. We turned all the face inside out. Everything was salted and then we shipped them to a tannery. So this is a real nice commercial tan skin. It's got good stretch. You know, for taxidermy, that's definitely what you want so you can get a proper mount. So the hard materials we do use, we'll put the ear liners in and then we'll set the eyes on the mannequin right here. You see how small the bear eyes are. A lot of people think they're a lot bigger than what they really are, but they can't see very well. When this is all ready here, we're gonna put the ear liners in. I'll have my daughter mix some epoxy and we'll actually put the liners right up inside the ear to hold it in place. Basically, we'll put it right down the mouth. Slide the ear liner right up inside the ear. The ear is all skinned out. Try to line the edge of the skin with the liner. Like you see it's starting to take the shape of the liner now. If you get a liner that's too big or too small, they won't fit, and then over the, over the years, the ears will actually start folding over. So you want a really nice, proper fit. See the leading edge right there lined up perfect down there. So you got both ear liners in. Next thing we'll do is uh, set the eyes. Outdoor Junkies is brought to you by Bullies Game Calls, Devil's Lake, North Dakota, Lightfield Ammunition, Spin and Strut by Timothy Creek Decoys. Mighty Deer Lick, Whitetails Unlimited, and these fine sponsors. Catch it all in Devil's Lake. Catch it. Catch it. Catch it. Catch it. Catch it all, all year round in Devil's Lake. <laughs> Time to get back in and catch some two-inch bluegill. <laughs> I'm excited. I can't wait to reel the first one in. Don't get any better than this, I'm telling you. I'm just pumped right up. You're watching Outdoor Junkies. Stick with us. <laughs> The spin and strut works better than other strutting decoys because it triggers a dominant genetic response. We get a gobbler's attention by calling as a hen. 
When the gobbler sees the natural motion of the spin and strut strutting in front of a hen, his response changes from curious and cautious to one of exerting his dominance over this intruder. This genetic response will stop hang-ups and can bring gobblers in from long distances. Even call shy birds will respond. So if you want the original lifelike motion decoy, get a spin and strut. <laughs> This segment is brought to you by Bullies Game Calls. Now this is the mannequin that Aaron chose to mount on. He wanted more of a level instead of an upright walking he wanted a level. Uh, the first thing we do when we get a skin in, we take the measurements from the eye to nose, from the, the nose all the way to the base of the tail. And then we do a circumference of the girth and a circumference of the neck. If we have to modify it by either shaving or adding more material to fit the bear properly, that's what we do. And uh, right here I'm going to show you how to set the eyes. In the shop we use uh, clay right here to set them. This is a synthetic clay. This potter's clay has a tendency to, to shrink down when it's drying. Where the synthetic clay there's no shrinkage. Basically we'll put a little bit of the clay in there and then we'll pop the eyes in push them flush up to it. This is probably the most crucial effect you know, to create the most detail is, is the proper eye set. Um, this isn't done, a lot of people just pop them in assuming that they're done, but you want to create the muscle structure, all the eyelids and the detail through there that really really makes that mount come alive. And I'll take my scalping tool and we'll create the shape, the shape we want. We try to even them all up. We don't want one eyelid higher than another. We'll start with the eyelid here and try to match the shape on the other side. And the next step, we're gonna put a little clay in the head to build his head up. This, this bear had a very good sized head on him. And being a spring bear, they generally lose quite a bit of weight, you know, 20 to 30% of their body weight during hibernation. So all the legs on this mannequin, we had to shave down a little bit so everything fit. Uh, this was pre-fitted a couple days ago to make sure everything's gonna work well when we mount it. Next, we're gonna put a little height paste up here. We're actually gonna slide the skin over the whole entire mannequin and uh, start the sewing process. Uh, what we're doing here is called stretching the skin, or this helps stretch in, obviously, and then break, relax the skin. Uh, you just you don't want a thicker skin uh, that's not where you can't stretch it enough where it's hard to get around the legs and stuff like that. You want to try to square the head up with everything. You see, it's got a really good broad head on it. But you can see the thick fur. I mean, this guy's way thicker than the average bear. Which is nice too when you're sewing, you got a lot of hair to hide your incisions too as well. Or a short hair deer, really tough to hide incisions because the hair is only an eighth of an inch. So we're going to flip them over and we're going to start some of the sewing process. It's definitely a two person job on a <laughs> big bear like this. But usually if you shoot the bear your lifetime, it, it generally gets full mounted. This is, a, this is called a hide puller. We use this quite a bit to adjust the skin. You hate yanking on the hair in case you got a, a skin that has loose hair problems. Uh, but this is a actually a well, well furred bear and it's well tanned where I'm not having any problem with the hair sliding out or anything. All right, so now I'm gonna put clay in the toes. You can see here that we skin the toes out all the way to the nail bed. We wanna make sure we have um, something in there so we can mold and shape those toes out. Because if you look here in the mannequin, they don't have that full toe in there to um, get that full look that we want and achieve. Details, details, details. Make sure the skin's all gonna line up. <laughs> don't know. Yeah, they're class clown here. <laughs> the spring bear too, their skin is half the thickness of a fall bear. Mm -hmm. so their body just absorbs so much of them. If I modify the legs of fit, I'm gonna have a quick modify. I want to make sure all the skin is gonna to come together all the way down right to the armpit. You don't want them too loose, but you don't definitely don't want them too tight. If you get them too tight, sometimes the seams or the stitches can actually open up more. You notice on a belly of a bear, there's hardly any hair at all. So a lot of times we'll do after this dries, we'll stain this too. But once you get them back to normal upright position, this hair will fold over and then we just stain the lower parts for cleansing. 
And when I use yellow thread, we can see it easier with the black hair. And then after it dries, we just run a bead of black stain right over the thread. Down here a little bit, then we'll start applying all the paste underneath the skin right here. To keep the legs held. See how it all comes together as you sew. And this little pad right here, we'll put a little bit of clay underneath it to lift it up. Normally it does bump out a little bit. You can see the team at full at work, but I don't know if you can see this gentleman right here. This is Val Wallace. Uh, he's been working with me for uh, six years or so. It's a good escape for him to get out of the house. He's retired and he's actually been a lot of help for me. A great welder. So we always need that type of type of experience in the shop. It's it pays for itself ten times. Example right here is bear stand. Yep, and he made this deluxe bear mounting stand. See right here, we're gonna actually make the tail for it. Basically when a mannequin comes, it comes with a wire. Uh, we're gonna make it to fit, uh, basically the skin's gonna wrap around here. We're gonna trim off what we don't need. While we finish up sewing, we're gonna go back and watch the footage of Aaron actually shooting this pair. Catch it all in Devil's Lake. Catch it. Catch it. Catch it. Catch it. Catch it all, all year round in Devil's Lake. Get back in and catch some two inch bluegill. <laughs> I'm excited. I can't wait to reel the first one in. Don't get any better than this, I'm telling you. I'm just pumped right up. You're watching Outdoor Junkies. Stick with us. <laughs> The spinach strut works better than other strutting decoys because it triggers a dominant genetic response. We get a gobbler's attention by calling as a hen. When the gobbler sees the natural motion of the spinach strut strutting in front of a hen, his response changes from curious and cautious to one of exerting his dominance over this intruder. This genetic response will stop hangups and can bring gobblers in from long distances. Even call shy birds will respond. So if you want the original lifelike motion decoy, get a spinach strut. <laughs> This segment is brought to you by Whitetails Unlimited, working for an American tradition. Day three in Saskatchewan, Delta Big Game Outfitters. We're at the same bait we've been at, and it was hit last night. So that's a good sign. Daryl said these bear bombs work really good up here, so uh, Brian had one left over. We're uh, gonna launch it right now, see what happens. The wind's right in our face, so uh, it's a good cover scent, and uh, if the wind gets swirling a little bit, hopefully it helps cover our scent, but I don't want this thing in my face. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Well, we're gonna hang here and about five hours sit. See what happens. Tonight's night. Third night's a charm, baby. Right, right. Bear coming right behind the bait. Right behind the bait.
It's a good shot, ain't it? Pasted him, dude. Oh. Oh. That's a big ass bear, dude. It's a good bear, man. Oh, dude, that's at least 300 pounds. <clears throat> Our guides, Ben and Kennedy, come in and uh, we've already picked up the blood here. We've got good blood. They're out in front of us. Pretty sure we heard them crash. We're on the blood. Let's go see if we can get him. Oh, look at that, Brian. Jeez. Look at that. Awesome. What a bear. <laughs> That's what he came for. Yep. Delta, big game outfitters, Saskatchewan, Canada. Big old boar. Smoked him, he only went. How far did he go, Ben? 100, 150? Look at the muzzle on that thing. How about 100 feet? Look at the foot on that thing. a big ball. Good shot. Now it works again. Oh yeah, now it works does again. Yeah. Yeah, he was all by himself. Yeah. Yeah. We're heading back to camp with a bear in the boat. Pick up the rest of the guys on the way through and time to celebrate. Junkie style. That was a huge beaver. Just like my bear. First thing we do after we get all sewed up, we'll uh, actually tuck his lips into place. Right now we're putting a hide paste all over the face, the front of the face, and then we'll go work on his nose. Now we really only use about a quarter inch of lip. So we'll take a scalpel, make a small cut, take a quarter inch, go right down the lip line. And we'll line the front part of the nose with the center part of the jaw. You're kind of working the skin to make sure it's all going to fit and line up. If we check back to the back corner, make sure it's all going to line up. So we're going to take all the necessary skin off it when we need. Come back, take this back corner of his jaw. We'll tuck that into place. Now we're going to work the rest of the skin right here. Try to get all the wrinkles out. We cut it, or we tuck it in the small channel that we have right here. You can see the lip line of the bear, you can see the different color of it. It's a little bit darker right on the edge of that lip. That's right where it would meet up to the edge of the mannequin. Then repeat it on the other side. And we just go around, we'll feel, make sure we get all bubbles. I'll be smooth through there. Just about got there. You want to make sure this darker spot of the hair, everything lines up. You don't want to over tuck it and then have one part of the chin on one side to the other. Same as the top part of the lips that we start with the front, and then we'll go to the back and then we'll tuck the middle section. And we're going to grab three, four little T-pins. We actually hold this skin right down into place. We'll pin that lip right tight to the top of the nose. This helps when the skin's dry and it don't pull back and leave that big gap that uh, it's famous for if you didn't put any pins there. That should hold it right there. Now we have the lips all tucked. Uh, it's all mount are sewn up. We're gonna actually roll it over and put it on the base so I can actually do the nose work and the eye work and do all the final grooming on it. Next thing we'll do, we'll line up all the nostrils, nostril skin, make sure that's in line. I like to do is actual super glue the nostril skin into place. And then we'll run up and hit the pad of the nostril, but we always start in the bottom part. Just run a little bit of super glue around through here. Come up to that tip. That's taxidermist's best friend is uh, super glue. What we got here is a kick it, so it instantly dries the glue. 
So we've got the bottom part all lined up, now we're going to get the pad in the where it belongs. Right, you see how nice anatomically correct this nostril is with the nose pad going down the crease. All the skin you can see is shaved really ultra thin so I can create that detail. If the skin was left too thick, you could not tuck it into place. So the main thing is get them real nice and thin and tuck it correctly and you'll get a good looking nose. Press her down, make sure this the glue is held. That's good there. That's it. Right now where we are roughing in the eyes. So take the skin, we're going to position it right into place where it needs to be. And then we'll, we'll pin them. It'll be held by three pins. We put one in the lower part of the tear duct, the upper part of the orbital, and the back corner just to keep it all into place. And we'll create his eye shape. So we're going to tuck that skin to give his eyelid back on there. Here, clean up the eye, some of this. About two hours you can take a brush and actually wipe off all the height paste on around the hair to come right off. And we'll do the same to this side. Tuck that skin right underneath the eyelid there, it gets a nice natural look. Clean that up and I will sit back a little bit and make sure it all lines up and you have even eyes set. Yeah, you must have been laying on that shoulder or something just to get that little spot real, but it's it's a cool looking one. Definitely yeah. identifies your bear, you know. Well, the last thing we do is toe adjustment. In about a two week time frame, we're gonna let this dry and then in about two weeks, we're gonna pull all pins, do the airbrushing, all the epoxy of the eyes to be ready for pickup see one happy hunter named Aaron. Catch it all in Devil's Lake. Catch it. Catch it. Catch it. Catch it. Catch it all, all year round in Devil's Lake. Time to get back in and catch some two inch bluegill. <laughs> I'm excited. I can't wait to reel the first one in. Don't get any better than this, I'm telling you. Up to pump right up. You're watching Outdoor Junkies. Stick with us. <laughs> the spinach strut works better than other strutting decoys because it triggers a dominant genetic response. We get a gobbler's attention by calling as a hen. When the gobbler sees the natural motion of the spin and strut, strutting in front of a hen, his response changes from curious and cautious to one of exerting his dominance over this intruder. This genetic response will stop hangups and can bring gobblers in from long distances. Even call shy birds will respond. So if you want the original lifelike motion decoy, get a spin and strut. <laughs> All right, today we're going to be finishing Aaron's bear here. You see that it's now completely dried. It's going to be ready for the finishing process. And then Aaron's going to be coming next week to pick it up. First thing we do, we like to remove all the T-pins that we put into place to hold the skin down. We're going to take a two-part epoxy mix. I use brown to for the covering up the eyes. That blends with the skin tone. And then it, when you paint it, it actually hides even better. Mix it until it's a uniform color. Roll it together, kind of like a clay. We'll start on the other eye here. Put a little bit of epoxy in each corner again. We'll take a scalpel and go right around the edge and push any of the epoxy right even with the where the eye meets the eyelid or the bottom part of the eye. Work around the eyelid here a little bit. 
I'm gonna make sure that it's all even looking, both eyes look alike. Now we're gonna let this dry for a little bit and we're gonna paint the eyes. Uh, next we're gonna go is to do the inside of the nostril. We're gonna use a pink epoxy to kind of give it a more flesher tone. Uh, we're gonna mix some of that up and put it right in there. Take a wet paintbrush and we'll get in here and try to smooth it out as best as we can. All right, next thing we're gonna do is paint the eyes, the nose, and right around the lip line, and we're gonna move all threads. We'll move them into the paint booth right now. Kinda of wanna blend the paint right down into the skin. You can see where it's actually covered up some of the light spots of the tanning. Paint around the eyelid. Our right, next is the nostril and the lip line. on the inside of yours and it's just a little bit of paint. Give him a once over, he looks really good. We'll be uh, cleaning the paint off the eyes and uh, we'll be doing the, the wet look of the nose and right around the eye to give it some light. You can see here too, it, it's got a little rub. Must have been sitting on his butt. You can see rubs on both sides. And spring bear, they're notorious for rub marks. Just for that long hair, it generally breaks some edges of it. A little Bosley action. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Should do my head. <laughs> now we're gonna move all the paint that, that I put on the eye. I do that by using a, a scalpel. Now you see it's starting to get a glare of the eye. That's a nice clean eye when you get a nice glare off the light off it. All right, so right now we're gonna finish the bear, give it the last look. We're gonna use this Mod Podge here and we're going to go right under the eyes, a small little amount, and then we're gonna do the nose. It's gonna give it that glossy, shiny finish. We wanna make sure we get the line right here evenly. We don't want an uneven line because then it's uneven, glossy finish. Wherever you put this, it will look glossy. Definitely less is more with this as well. You wanna make sure it's an even coat, not too much, not too thick, not too thin get the best look you can. Hey junkies, today we're here at uh, Nature's Touch Taxidermy and uh, we're picking up my bear from last spring in Saskatchewan. I'm fired up. Don says it looks awesome and uh, I knew I had a really good height on it when we killed it and anxious to see what, it's, what it looks like. So uh, let's go down and take a look. The spring bear got about four more inches than the fall bear. I mean, look at the loft he got on that. Eh? I knew he had a good height when I killed him, but oh, man, that is boy. something unreal there, boy. Nice big head, big shoulders. Uh, this is gonna be a bear of a lifetime for most people doing it. Kept his chocolate patch. He kind of said that was more of a rub. More yeah, of a the rub. Guard hairs are broke off a little bit, but that's awesome. It gives a character, though. Character, that's yeah. What I like. I'd say I like it too. Big old skull on him. Sweet. I'm telling you what, that looks awesome, Don. Cool. That's Complete great. full circle. Jeez. From harvest to finish. That is unreal. <laughs> hey, thank you very much. Yep. Don. Yeah, no, Your work is thank unbelievable. You. Congratulations to you. Now, this is an exceptional bear. Hey, if you guys are in Wisconsin, Northern Illinois, come check Don Rich out at Nature's Touch Taxidermy. The guy does unreal work, and you will not be disappointed. Just, I'm blown away. I got goosebumps right now, and uh, it just this would be something that'll always be in my basement, and just crazy. It's, Memories it's awesome. every time you see it. Hey, check this guy out because he knows what he's doing. Uh, you come down here and see his work, you'll realize it right away. So give him a call. You get your next trophy of a lifetime. Make sure you talk to this guy and uh, see what he can do for you. It's awesome work. Number 736. <laughs> Big old boy. Got the skull back and uh, Donnie did some rough measurements and he's definitely a Pope and Young Bear so uh, turned out awesome. It's pretty cool. Neat to see this process done. <laughs> Those pins in there, it looks like he's got beaver teeth. <laughs> <laughs>